In this video, I'm going to show you some examples of the sorts of integrals that we can solve using integration by parts. Now, the rule that we just came up with is that the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So, the first example I want to do is the integral of x e to the x dx. Okay, so if you look at this um, integral, this is not something you would be able to do using any of the t techniques that we've learned before. Um, for example, a u substitution is not going to do the trick because whatever choice of u you would make, um, for instance, if you set u equals e to the x, or u equals log x, or something like that, um, it would not make this integral into something that was any easier to integrate. Okay, so um, for this first one, I'm going to just demonstrate how to do it and not give you too much um, insight into why this works. And then a little later on, after I've done a couple of examples, I'll give you some advice for identifying the sorts of cases where integration by parts is useful and um, how to go about figuring out the strategy for approaching it. Okay, so what we need to do is identify our integral x e to the x dx with u dv. And the way to do that is we assign part of it to be u, and we assign part of it to be dv. Um, and for this first one, I'm just going to tell you what we choose, um, and then later on, this choice will hopefully make some sense. So I'm going to choose u equals x, and then everything else in the integrand has to be my dv. So that's going to be e to the x dx. So, just to double check, integral of u dv is integral of x times e to the x dx. So we are set. Okay, and then, because the rest of the um, equation here has not just u and dv, but v and du, we have to figure those out. So du, we calculate the same way we did for u substitution. So if u equals x, then we take the derivative, and du by dx is 1, which means du equals dx. Oops. du equals dx. And then slightly trickier, but only a little bit, is we know dv is e to the x dx, which means dv by dx is e to the x. And if we want a v that gives us that dv by dx, well, the easiest choice is just e to the x. So to double check, if I take dv by dx of this, I get the um, situation I started with, dv equals e to the x dx. Okay, so at this point, we can just plug these values in to the rest of the equation. So integral of x e to the x dx, which is my integral of u dv, is going to be equal to uv well, my u is x, and v is e to the x. So this becomes x e to the x, and then minus the integral of v du. So v is e to the x, and du is dx. Okay, so at this point, we've taken an integral that we don't know how to solve, integral of x e to the x dx, and we've rewritten it as some term that doesn't have an, any integration in it and another term that we actually do know how to integrate. Okay, and that's going to be the general trick for using integration by parts. Um, we're going to rewrite an integral as a slightly different integral and hopefully we can do that in a way that we know how to solve it. Okay, so next I'm going to rewrite this line, so x e to the x, and I'm going to actually do the integral. So the integral of e to the x is just e to the x, and to that I add c. Okay, so this is an indefinite integral, and I need to remember to always add that c. 
And then this is it. This is my answer. So the integral of x e to the x dx is x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. Okay, so we can actually check that that is correct. So anytime we find an indefinite integral, we can always check by taking its derivative and see if we get back the integrand that we started with. So d by dx of x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. Well, when I take the derivative of x e to the x, I have to use the product rule. So I take the derivative of x, which is just one. So my first term is e to the x. And then to that, I add the other term from the product rule. So leave x alone and take derivative of e to the x. And I get x e to the x. And then I take the derivative of the next term, negative e to the x. And the derivative of c is just zero. So at this point, I have e to the x minus e to the x. So those terms cancel out, and I'm left with just x e to the x, which indeed is the integrand that I started with. So this checks out. We have successfully found the indefinite integral of x e to the x. OK, so next I want to do another example. All right, so first I'm going to rewrite the rule. Integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, and this next one I want to do is the integral of the natural log of x dx. Okay. Well, so I notice that when I'm assigning my u and my dv, that whatever I set u equal to, I'm going to have to take the derivative of. And in this case, I actually know how to take the derivative of natural log, even though at this point we don't know how to take its integral. So the derivative of natural log is just 1 over x. So with that in mind, I'm going to set u equals to log x, and dv is everything else. Well, everything else is just dx. Okay, so now that I've picked u and dv, next I need to find du, which in this case is going to be 1 over x dx. And if dv is dx, then that means v is just x. So the integral of log x dx, if I plug into my formula, well, I need uv, well, v is x, and u is log x, so I have x log x minus the integral of v du. Well, v is x, and du is 1 over x dx. Okay, so I notice that I have x times 1 over x, which are going to cancel. I'll have just the integral of 1 here. All right, so when I actually do the integral, I rewrite this first term, x log x minus, well, the integral of 1 is just going to be x. Okay, so this is my answer. Don't want to forget the plus c. And again, we can check. <clears throat> okay, so to check, I just take the derivative of my final answer, x log x minus x plus c. So for x log x, I need to take the derivative, uh, which like I need to use the product rule for. So derivative of x is just 1, so I get log x. The second term from the product rule, I leave the x alone and take the derivative of log x. So x times 1 over x. And then I take the derivative of this next term, negative x becomes negative 1. Derivative of c is 0. Okay, but again, I have x over x, which is just 1, minus 1, so that those cancel out and I get 0, and all that's left is log x, which indeed is the integrand that I started with, so this also checks out. Okay, so um, 
two observations from these two examples are that integration by parts is useful if I know how to take the derivative of what's in my integral, but I don't know how to take its integral. And it's also useful if I have something that when I take the derivative, it gets simpler. Okay. And those will tend to be the most common places that we use integration by parts. Okay. In the next uh, video, I'm going to show you some more um, examples and give you some advice about how to use integration by parts.